This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. A tale of two men, one bitter and angry and racist, the other pleasant, happy, and not racist. This is Wretched Radio. Karl Marx, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, two contemporaries from the 19th century in London, England, no doubt, as both were popular in their own way. Amongst the folk of Great Britain, they were most certainly aware of one another, and they could not stand more starkly opposed to the other man in their worldview. And the effects radical from an article, well worth the read, from LarryAlexTaunton.com describes one Karl Marx. He saw capitalism as a poison perpetrated on humanity by Jews, and he hated them for it. Though it seems anti-Semitism came naturally to him, to read Karl Marx's personal letters or published works is to encounter a bitter, evil mind concealing a hate in that he and others promoted as a noble vision of humanity. That is Karl Marx. That is the fellow you are feeling today as you watch the evening news. You see rioting in the streets. What is going on? I'll say it plainly. Marxism is what's going on. Well, no, it's about social justice. It's Marxism that's going on. It's masked in social issues, which we are not going to simply cast aside. Oh, well, it's really Marxism at play, so we don't need to address it. I'm not suggesting that. What I am saying is that what we are seeing these days as a movement about racial justice is motivated, it's fueled, it is informed by Marxism. There's no denying it. And it is in lockstep with a particular political party whose name does not begin with the letter R. Karl Marx hated God and he hated, well, pretty much everything. He was bitter and he was angry and wow, was he racist. Contrast that to one Charles Haddon Spurgeon who lived at the same time. This is from The Times, from a review of Charles Haddon Spurgeon preaching. Fancy a congregation consisting of 10,000 souls streaming into the hall, mounting the galleries. Mr. Spurgeon ascended his tribune to the hum and rush of trampling men, succeeded a low, concentrated thrill and murmur of devotion. By the way, this is when he was preaching. I believe this was when he preached in front of that large crowd at Royal Surrey Gardens Music. This wasn't his, this wasn't his congregation. This is when he did a special event at the music hall. 10,000 people came to hear him, and it was electric. That's the word that's used. It was like an electric current through the breast of every one present, and by this magnificent chain the preacher held as fast bound, held us fast bound for about two hours. Wow. (laughs) And nobody complained. It is not my purpose to give a summary of his discourse, writes this reviewer. It is enough to say of his voice that its power and volume are sufficient to reach everyone in that vast assembly of his language that is neither high flown nor homely found the right level for both parties to go he's not dumb but he's not so erudite i can't get him he chose his words well of his style that it is at times familiar at times declamatory here's the key phrase often eloquent but always happy When you read Charles Spurgeon's sermons, you might think all you're going to get is flame throwing because that's the type of stuff that typically gets the attention because we need that these days as a counter to all of the nonsense preaching that we hear in so many pulpits. But Charles Spurgeon wasn't just a flamethrower. He threw flames, but he preached as a man who was happy in the Lord. He had joy in the Lord, and it was infectious, and you felt it even when he was throwing flames that he was a happy man, contrasted to Karl Marx, who was miserable, who used the N-word a lot, especially to describe Jewish people. The Jewish 
N-words, he referred to them as, because he hated them. Charles Spurgeon, no doubt aware of the creeping movement of Karl Marx's socialism slash communism, Spurgeon had in fact noted the dangers of socialism remarkably early in his ministry. In 1855, he warned of communists who wanted nothing less than, quote, the real disruption of all society as at present established. Hello? Hello? Paging critical theory. Hello? <laughs> Paging the social justice movement. Do you hear? We've got to burn this blank down. We, we've got to get rid of police. We've got to get rid of families. That's what Black Lives Matter, the, the, the organization states. We've got to get rid of families. Boing! That's what Karl Marx said. Remember? <laughs> this is Marxism today. Alive and well. Charles Spurgeon asked the crowd that he was preaching to in 1855, would you desire reigns of terror here as they had in France? That is why what you are seeing today is not a continuing reformation of the American Revolution, but you are seeing the French Revolution played out. That the rich, the powerful, they've got to go. Specifically, those with white skin color. No, exclusively those with white skin color. And it doesn't matter how much an individual inside of the white community gives to, say, the black community. It doesn't matter because he's lumped in with the community because you remember critical race theory slash Marxism is all about identity groups, not individuals, groups. So it was the bourgeois and the proletariat then. Today it is the oppressor and the oppressed. And if somebody who's an oppressor, say, I don't know, Jeff Bezos, if he even gives money, he promotes Black Lives Matter, the movement. Doesn't matter. They set up a guillotine in, outside of his house, which the French Revolution, this type of movement, always leads to the guillotine, always. It doesn't matter that he acts in a way that conforms to their values because he's in the wrong group. And that is Marxism at its very core. Do you wish to see all society shattered and men wandering like monster icebergs on the sea, dashing against each other and being at last utterly destroyed? Charles Spurgeon wasn't all that clear, was he? Wow, like a bell. He was opposed to socialism. 1878, fast forward. Spurgeon made a tentative prediction to his congregation, quote, German rationalism, which is the Frankfurt School, which is where so many of these ideologies have come from, along with French philosophers in the 20th century. German rationalism, which has ripened into socialism, may yet pollute the mass of mankind and lead them to overturn the foundations of society. That's what Antifa is about. That's what Black Lives Matter group is about. Overturning this society. Why do they want to tear everything down? Because they want to tear everything down. Because in order to accomplish a what they believe is a more just end, they have got to wreck everything that exists because everything that exists was built wrongly with the wrong motivation by oppressors to hold down the oppressed peoples. Back to Charles Spurgeon preaching. Then, advanced principles will hold carnival and free thought, like atheism, will riot with the vice and blood which were years ago the insignia of the age of reason. In other words, you're going to see yourself another French Revolution. I say, not that it will be so, but I should not wonder if it came to pass, for deadly principles are abroad and certain ministers are spreading them. Hello. Hello, social justice warriors inside of evangelicalism. Charles Spurgeon could be talking to you. The critical race ideologies adopted, unbelievably, in my opinion, as a helpful analytical tool? This is... I know this always gets disqualified because you mentioned Adolf Hitler, but that's like saying Mein Kampf. It's a helpful analytical tool. It helps us to understand what's really going on. You'd go, well, maybe it does, but it's a horrible book. And critical race theory is a horrible book. Why? Because it's based on a horrible book, Das Kapital, the Communist Manifesto, because they are Marxist ideologies and they put people into classes they put people into groups for the sake of division, for the sake of anarchy, for the sake of tearing down, so that presumably 
Nobody again will ever be rich. Nobody again will ever be poor. Everybody will have the exact same amount, which is not, by the way, a biblical ideal. God clearly is okay with different people having different amounts of stuff. Ask Father Abraham. Ask the people in the Bible, like David and Solomon. God is okay with that. Capitalism helps to drive people to do better. Communism, it beats people down under the guise of equity, under the guise of fairness, under the guise of everybody should have the exact same everything. And in order to achieve that goal, everything that we know now, capitalism, math, science, language, morals, family, the church, it has to go. That's the ideology of Karl Marx versus the ideology of one Charles Hedden Spurgeon. And we're bringing this into the church? This is Wretched Radio. Well, thank you, Carol. I I can't wait to try some of that low-sodium peppermint lasagna. Sounds delicious. Let's get to the weather, shall we? As you can see, we are going to have a massive warm front moving its way up the eastern seaboard, expecting temperatures upper 90s and low 100s. Unless, of course, you're outside of Christ, then on Judgment Day, it is going to be hot! Back to you, Carol. Not only hot, weeping, gnashing of teeth. And so thirsty, your tongue's going to be stuck to the roof of your mouth. You're just going to wish for a storm to come through, which you folks down in the south can be expecting on Wednesday.